boys. Simon. Good evening. Oh, good. Um, another Hearts victory. Uh, what a sombre affair. It's getting so boring, isn't it? Just a wee bit. I've tried to think, even in the community chat, I've been trying to think things to get upset about things tomorrow, but Hearts haven't posted anything on YouTube for like three months. <laughs> I've been sitting furiously typing an email to the club. My bed sheets have never been so close to getting ripped off. <laughs> Your missus will be glad to be fair. When was the last time you had to buy bed sheets? Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Try to think of catchy slogans that go around content and fans and run by clowns. I'm just trying. I'm just once I get the word in <laughs> right, you'll start seeing those banners at like Ibrox and that. Pounds over content, or I don't know, fan run by clowns. <laughs> I'll, I'll hang you something. I'll hang you something. Uh, Tom, what's been happening? No much. Missed you the last couple of weeks, so I'm here, here to be a happy clapper again. And uh, plenty although you've all happy been happy clapping, clapping. Yeah. there's plenty to be happy clapping about. Although I do have to pre warn you, in my bitterness the other night, I couldn't sleep. You know, I didn't sleep. I'm a pure canny sleep. And I remembered that one of your pals, the Levy guy, during the reconstruction season and when we were de- relegated or demoted by vote, I remember he played a song on the piano singing about how we were getting relegated. And I found it. I was like, superb. The minute Livingston are, are uh, relegated and it's confirmed, you will be tweeting that <laughs> all over social media. Because it, was such a lovely, it was such a lovely video and you just reminded yeah. me... Uh, when I you thought you were going to say you pulled, you pulled the guitar out and you were you were writing the second. <laughs> yeah, well, you never know, mate. You dust the off cover. the guitar and bring it out of retirement and get a, get a Gorgie version on the go. Uh, Kev, what's been happening? Uh, not much. Uh, good weekend. Uh, my nephew was up from down south, so uh, aye, good few beers and night out on Saturday. It was uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Nice. Always helps when it's three points as well. Exactly, exactly. And though. Uh, you didn't attend Hearts 1, tell everybody that you plan on coming to Edinburgh Derby, please. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, again, didn't, didn't go on Saturday, we won, but I don't know, we've got, we've got a wee visit to Rangers in between now and then, so I don't know if that's going to upset the apple cart, but uh, I've, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't have came on Saturday anyway, even if I was up for it, um, just because I've not been very well the last couple of days, I'd, uh, I think I had a dodgy kebab on Friday night, so I've been ruining that, and left me with a hoop like the top of a vintage golf bag but it's uh, it's mm-hmm. it's uh, it's all right getting better I hope you go back to the same kebab shop next tuesday <laughs> 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 yes, <if you> know. <laughs> but, that's actually true well i'm uber eating now, so i'm gonna send you an uber eats right <laughs> to your house, <laughs> to that house i'm just gonna inundate you with kebabs for that kebab shop uh, and me being a greedy bastard that i won't say no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, another, another week goes by, another Hearts victory. Uh, what we now is that our eleventh win out of twelve. Last twelve Sorry. games is it? Fourteen wins out of our last fifteen matches or something like that, including the cup. We haven't been beat since we lost at Petardre. Twelve games right? on Twelve deep. games on beaten. Yep. Outrageous. Lauren Shanklin scored again. Lauren Shanklin scored in every game since bar one since December. Now heading towards March, which is just an absolute joke. I think the only game he never scored in was Dundee at home when he missed the penalty just for a laugh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's actually unbelievable. Uh, so we'll talk about Saturday's game. Uh, again, can't remember what game we spoke about. Maybe it was at St Johnston or one of the last games where we said that Hearts were just in complete and utter control the match comfortable as comfortable can be Airdrie was comfortable as com- comfortable Don't can be, be. I, thought the same on, I thought the same on Saturday as well <clears throat> I thought the exact same on Saturday the teams get loads of confidence uh, we'll do a bit about tactic stuff because I've seen a few folk wrongly say that we never played well in the first half I disagree not playing well and failing to create chances are different things uh, but we could talk about a bit of that Uh Preview this weekend's title title challenge match because Celtic are they'll be lucky to finish in the top six in their current form. <laughs> uh, so it's between <laughs> us and Rangers for the title. So we'll talk about you know our title challenge and where we can go when it comes to that. Uh, we'll look forward to 
Yeah, a big week for Hearts. Uh, a big week for for the club and the breathing space that we have now to go into it. We'll, we'll touch on a bit about that. We'll go through some Hearts headlines as well. We some some of our players forget that some of our better players are still knowing the side. And you look back to some of the episodes where we spoke about like last year when. Or begging for Halkett to come back, would have been begging for boys to be in the team, would have been begging for Mackay to be in the team, etc. So you barely even noticed that they're that they're not here. Um, and then we actually start to think if you can get a tune out of them, how good a side we could actually could actually be. So we'll go through some of that stuff. Uh anything else you just want to talk about, boys? Mm. The things hanging up behind you. We talk about our new merch. Really? So, we uh, over the last weeks and months, we've been sort of in the think tank, looking at. We obviously did the we did the Henry stuff to begin with. Well, we did the Gorgi stuff to begin with, and then we did Henry. Obviously, some of his iconic goalie tops. Was it because he was my childhood hero? Maybe. <laughs> now we've recreated some of my favourite childhood tops. Uh, but now we went through. Hearts have had some belting, iconic, mainly away tops. Uh, we've had a couple of belting home tops as well, but it's mirroring you know, so much you can do with it. So we've had a look at iconic tops and uh, recreated them. So we'll go through the merch. Obviously, you've got, what, 93, 94 candy stripe fairly. You've got the Pasquale Bruno over the shoulder, which is an actual belter. It's well nice on as well. Then you've got the 96... The, when we beat Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup semi-final, iconic tote by Alan Johnston type thing. Mm-hmm. That'll slightly change. That's going to get a maroon mm-hmm. collar and it'll have the different badge. It'll have that badge on that rather than the, the badge that it's got right now. Got this one. This one's one of my favesies. This is one of the 19... It's the 1973-4 centenary shirt thing, the Ajax oh. one. That is an absolute belter, that one. Don't know why I made that creepy noise top. that I should have, yeah, but I like it. shouldn't have done that, but it's a sexy the thing. Home top, the only home top that we've done is that one. It's it's hard to see there, but it's basically the, was it 96 top again as well? Uh, the pony strongbow number. It's an absolute belter. It's, that's nice. It looks a bit redder than it is in real life. It's proper maroon, that. The season that shan't be mentioned, but I'd that unbelievable away kit so we've obviously done the silver it looks grey there but it's silver and that is this could be my favourite one of them all it's well nice as well excellent and then uh, obviously the the two behind and the one that I'm wearing so we'll have a think in what we want to do I don't know if we just release all them or if we drip feed them I don't know we're no Calvin Klein I don't think anybody cares that much about <laughs> 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 drip feeding them so we might just uh you might just bang them all on the website and then uh, take it for them. They'll be about eight weeks for delivery because they're they're made and manufactured to order. They come from India or wherever, so we'll uh, have details pretty soon when they come out. Uh, we'll obviously have a look, make sure that they're affordable in that as well. With any day, any of the stuff that we do with the merch to make any money, you know, other than cover costs, in the podcast, everything else is is reinvested into the podcast. So we're not try and skin anybody or whatever and we'll let you know the details as soon as we've got them. Yeah, you're hearing it. Sexy microphones, good cameras, which you still yeah. don't have because they're still I'm in trying the to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get uh, Alan McManus to uh, model all the tops for us. <laughs> <laughs> Will he even fit? He'd be a monster there, a human being now, surely. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm just definitely not going to do it. <laughs> 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 that's, that's good. <laughs> we must say... Um, if you are audio listening right now, probably best to head to YouTube and you can see all them as well. <laughs> yeah, that's um, very or join cool. or join the community chat. We've we've shared them in there as well. Well, to be fair, the people that listen to this podcast are more learned in hearts than you are. So by saying <laughs> 90, 93, 94 away top, I'm sure they know what that one is and they'll know what Pasquale Bruno is, etc. And they'll know what the season we shouldn't talk about so wake it is. But I think there's one of them after I was born. The whole top, so so if you're like too. Tam, <laughs> if you're like Tam and you supported Levy until you were 13 and big enough to get the the bus to Tynecastle by yourself eventually, then my dad would kill you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> right, boys, 
what do you want to do? You want to go through some of the headlines first, and then we'll do a tam down. Do you want to do a tam down first for a laugh because he's back and we like to bully him? Do you? Nah, uh, no one notices. Ah, uh, uh, gone. <laughs> well, do the tam down first. Get it out of the way, and uh, and yeah, all we'll we'll Right. Uh, so I have two potential options here. I've got a tam friendly one, uh, and then a not Stop not it. so tam friendly one. Um, so I think we'll do. Just to make him sweat a wee bit. Well, is the Tam friendly one where you literally tell him the game, the date, where it was played, the score, the team, <laughs> and then say, right, try and remember <laughs> what I've just told you. So that sounds good to what, me. <laughs> uh, we are what twelve games unbeaten now, I think, and if we, um... aye, aye, twelve games unbeaten now, and if we avoid defeat to Rangers on the weekend, that will be thirteen. So I've had a look back to a couple of the last times that we've been on a run like that. Then one of them was fairly recent. It was only way back in, not that far way back in 2018, which is the Tam friendly one. That's the one we're not going with, right? So we're going to do the Tam unfriendly <laughs> one, which is um, a good few years earlier than that. And I won't give you the exact year just for the sake of keeping it. In fact, I'll give you the year. I won't give you the exact date. It was 1998. All right, so the uh, remember that iconic cup final. I was still supporting Lundy. They were like Meadowbank Festival or Ferranti, <laughs> whatever they were called back then. Like. Uh, they would have been f- uh, Meadowbank. But uh, aye, so I won't tell you the exact game, but you you know the rough time frame. Um, so you, you're looking at early in 1998, and we'll go. Uh, let's go with Tam first. Tam, swing swing for it. See if you get it. We get a game where we played Rangers or something. Is that what? We're uh, right? No, no. It was just the, the the last time we had thirteen games unbeaten. I'll, I'll tell you the game, but it was a uh, a draw at home to Kilmarnock. Jim Jeffries was the manager. It was in nineteen ninety eight. Yep. Um, in the lead up to us winning the cup, we hadn't actually won it yet. We didn't win it until the summer. Um, so a few games before that, I give you the rough idea of the team you're looking for. Cheers, Cheers say correct. Well done, Tam. That is the, probably the only point you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to should we annoy Tam and do all the <laughs> normal the, ones the, the, the legends, please. or should the we ones or them. should we do the the obscure ones it's up to you it's like, do you like ripping uh, the wings off a bug aye <laughs> Grant Murray uh, Grant Murray was not in it's... that team but bear in mind this uh uh, oh, is it the team or the squad? Is it, is it the game? It's the game. I was yeah, just yeah, naming the, the folk that were in the so squad. All right, sorry, you've got, sorry. Um, 11 players. And back in the day, Tam, I don't know if you know this, but there was only uh, three people allowed on the bench back then. Right. So. Right, well, I've changed my hang right. I'm going to say Dave McPherson. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> right. He wasn't aware of the rules. He said Dave McPherson, so he, <laughs> you can't steal it. So, yes, he gets that. Uh, Kev? Uh, Paul Ritchie. Paul Ritchie was involved, yes, Tam. Stevie Wheeler. Absolutely correct. Oh, you're going to make a fool out of me here, Corbett. Stevie Fulton. Steve Fulton, absolutely. Kev. Thomas Fogel. Yes, also involved. Tam. Gary Naismith. Gary Naismith. Oh, I see. Look at this. There's no pause, no flinching. Just going straight for it. Love it. It is like one of the most legendary teams we've ever had, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm surprised you're not struggling with it, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Corbett. <laughs> Salvatore. Salvatore, yep. Bang on. There's only three of the starting 11 left to get and all the subs. Kev? Uh, Neil McCann. Neil McCann uh, was, yes. Tom? Colin Cameron. Colin Cameron, no, wasn't involved that day. <sighs> Got it. Uh, Stefan Adam. Uh, no, also not involved that day. <laughs> oh, well. Mm. There you go. We've set you up. Kev, you must get this one. Uh, Jim Hamilton. Yeah, correct. Our top goal scorer that, that season for some random reason. Uh, that, that could, I could right. take to Jim Hamilton, but that's, that's one for a different episode. Tam? Uh, nobody says Steve Fulton, have Yeah, they have. I Corbett should say Steve Fulton. Oh, you said Steve Fulton. Sorry. Um, where are we? We arrive at the end. Gary Locke. Correct. And that's the starting 11 done. So, oh. 
All right. I thought Gary would have been injured. I thought he'd have been injured too. That changes my thing. Right. So what we do, I did for the bench because there's been no Robbo. He'd have been there. And there's been no disappointing. He'd have been in the squad. But three subs, would we have put any of them on the bench? Well, if Stefan Adam was a, I got Robbo. No. Damn. Kev. I'll just do it. No, Disappointing. It wasn't there. <laughs> Not Ooh. involved in the match day squad. Wow. Damn. Oh. I've named them already. Yeah. To model my to model <laughs> these talks. <laughs> There's a gift. Yep. Tam sing the Doa Deer song. Go through them. Tam is going. Tom, go he's, on, go on, he's, he's trying to play back what happened four and a half minutes ago and he's struggling. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Jules <laughs> <laughs> Rousset is in our go. I don't even know that song. Okay, where's the captain's <laughs> band? You just go for it. Sing the whole song and tell me it. McManus never gets a start. And he didn't on this day either. So, yeah, well done, Alan McManus. What were you, Kev? Uh, Alan McManus, incidentally, um, wasn't used at all. Um, didn't come on. Uh, Jose Katongo. Correct. Well, yeah, very crabby, baby. <laughs> uh, right, Kev's in the lead. Uh, there's only one player left. In fact, there's two points left. There is a point for the one remaining used sub and then I'll also give you a point for the goal scorer um, in a 1-1 draw against Kelly. Probably one of the most unlikely people to score other than Rousse, but Tam, over mm-hmm. to you. Did Did you have a sub-keeper back then? You could have, but it would have been a waste. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not yeah, yeah. that. I'm right, actually chapping. Pick, I'm up, pick up I'm what done. I'm putting down. There's no sub-keeper <laughs> there. Right. You chatting? Okay, I'm chopping right, uh, Between Corbett and Kev. Let's try and think. Uh... <coughs> Would that have been a young boy? Was um, not uh, like a young homegrown talent or anything like that, so. Right, okay. I was thinking it was. I know, I'm trying to think. And that, did they not play? Uh, no, he did. Come on. He was on it, right, he came on. So it was a midfielder then. Who the hell played in that team? Who the hell played in that team? I'm singing the song in my head. He was, um... <laughs> Trying to fucking remember. He was Oh, is it Lee Mako? Yes. Well done. You know what, I actually just Googled. I just Googled Hearts player Park and Ride because um, there's a story there. I was wondering to remember his name. Right. Allegedly. <laughs> okay. Ah, yeah, I can. Yes. <laughs> uh, and don't pretend that you didn't remember him because he played for Levy. Like, it's, <laughs> no, it's no kid on. Like, he's the hard one. Even if, Tam, you, you can you can go for a pee or something. Do what you normally That was do. the mm-hmm. hard one. That was the Tam friend. That was the Tam unfriendly one. The, um, oh, right. we, we've got another one. As I say, we've got more chance of learning. learning Remembering, sorry, in 98 than no, 2018. Because right, that's what go for it. Fucking go for jobbers it. in 2018, right. isn't it? Um, yeah, tw- 2018, again, I'm not going to give you the exact date uh, or anything like that. I'm going to transpose. Uh, transpose well, we're gonna, I'm going to copy your scores across um, and we'll go double bubble here, right? So, uh, right, Hearts 2, St. Johnson 1. Craig Levine was the manager and it was um, sometime in 2018. And Kev, I can't see your hands. You've made that sound well better than it is, because if that's an unbeaten run, it's probably like 10 draws and like two wins or some shit like that. <laughs> it was or one it, before the League Cup. Or it includes it League we, Cup we games or something, didn't it? it? Right. Yeah. It's like the four group stage games in the League Cup <laughs> and the first five games of the season or something. And it doesn't include friendlies, it's only competitive games, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> uh, right, so... Uh, Tam, you can kick us off because you're in third place. Christoph Berra. Christoph Berra. No. Really? Aaron Hughes. Uh, yeah, no. Don't know why I went up so high there. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yes, Peter he Haring. was there. And played. Tam. Peter um, Haring was dressed like my ma. 
at the Federation rally on Sunday. It was weird as hell. <laughs> He's got the same haircut my ma had in like 1990, like looked like Princess Diana. I remember all the women back then had that Princess Diana haircut. Mm-hmm. Went in and got a short back and sides. I, I'm literally pot kettle right there, actually. Wait, I've got my wife's glasses on and I look like my ma. Look, that's what Peter Haring looked like <laughs> on Sunday. I swear to God, that's what he looked like. And I was like, are you all right, mate? He had a wee cardigan on and that. I was like, all he needed was a can of Diet Coke and a packet of Regal King size and it would be my ma. <laughs> <laughs> He's much more cultured than that. It'd have been Galway's, but ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those wee cigarello things or whatever, and like a wee, a wee port or something. Aye. And eating a Toblerone, <laughs> even though he's no Swiss, but never mind. Aye. Aye. Where's ours? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, hey, who's thought? What are we talking uh, about? Peter aye, Haring, well, right, Tam, it's your uh, shot. Hi, Tam, your go. Peter Haring's off the board. <laughs> uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith, yes. Well done. I knew you, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, Ross, Herbalife, Callahan. Uh, Callahan. No. Callum Agaga. No, he's not there. Whatever they call Jeez. I hated these teams. No, there was so, uh, the same thing is, there's so many instantly forgettable players in it. This is why this is so much harder than 98, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who would have been in goals? McLaughlin? Uh, Tam. Oh. Uh, if it's no Mc... No, I'm not even going to go. Uh, I will go Don Kerry. Don, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don Kerry, no, wasn't involved. Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith, yep. Thomas. Kev. Oh, yeah, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> it's just that. We're going to say each other's name. I know. Kev. Pam. What? Conor uh, Randall. No. Oh, what an absolute jobber. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, wasn't involved. Tam. Tam. Uh, Danny Amankwa. Yes. Well done. He was a used substitute. Yeah. He was Fuck terrible, he was wasn't he? I just remember Corbett's. Idol song against his name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, Milinkovic. Uh, no, wasn't involved either. Milinkovic or whatever the hell he was uh, called. Skinny. Uh, no, he wasn't either. Kev. Novak. Novak, no. I'm trying to get that Puma Horror or Puma Chuck. Was it the Puma one? Or was no, that was Robbie Nielsen. Robbie Nielsen was, was Puma. It It'd have been so a, a Shan Umbro n- number. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a white, white collar. Oh, it just reminded me. Uh, Jim? Arnold Jim, yes. Uh, he was there. Tam's now in the lead. Yeah, the f- That's not very good. The 57-year-old striker that we signed with bad knees just for oh, a laugh. Christ, Stephen McLean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, he was there. Kev? John Sutter. Yeah, John Sutter. on a roll. That's much better. Tam? <laughs> Um, is Lafferty still there? No, he was gone. But you can have that as my answer because I've got nothing else. You've got to have something else. Uh, this is literally five Who was a keeper ago. at that point? Jack Hammond still nope. a keeper? No. Nope. God. We signed them because he could lift fucking Volkswagen polos, but he couldn't <laughs> play fucking football. And he's still only to this day scored three goals or something like that. Uchi. No. No. That's probably <laughs> actually cheered you up, Corbett. He was there. Um... I'll never, ever forget that day. Honestly, when we went to Kilmarnock. I didn't beat a Hearts game that whole season and everybody told me how amazing this guy <laughs> we'd signed was up front and I was like, that can't be him. That guy there. That's not him. Big John Coffey for the Green Mile. That's not him. I was like, Surely, is there a different guy coming on or something? Because that guy, we didn't play football. American football maybe, but he's not a football player. Right. He's, 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 he's My not proudest uh, block on Twitter. Is he still blocked this time? Uh, I, I imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You've you not said anything to actually support no, getting back in your good things. Let's put it that way. That's fucking good, but. <laughs> Look at this um, scene. Wait, uh, thanks very much for giving me. Giving me a bit more time. Um, yes, was he Dimitri was. Dimitri Mitchell playing? He's impossibly shaped here. 
Tom. Which possibly shaped head. Right. They had a bit of an alien head thing going on, didn't they? No. But Tom. Um it's Harry Cochran. Harry Whoa, couldn't say that. Harry Cochran. In the uh, no, he wasn't. Call it. Uh, Blobby Zlamal. Blobby Zlamal. Ah, that would have been the keeper. It is. Give. Where are we with regards uh, to numbers now? Are you on? mean the scores or the amount left? Kev, one transfer when they could have been signed 27 <laughs> players. We're here all night, just keep going. I mean, we've been close to naming the world, to be honest. Try work out. Let's try to work out if it was before we've, the January uh, or after. Three outfield, uh, sorry, three, I always do that. Three start and 11. Um, and then you've only got one person from the bench of seven. So, um, uh, we, we could be here hell. a while. So, if, um, you, if you're listening, folk, go and put a kettle on. Or, uh. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, did I see his name? No, I didn't. No, he's not involved. Okay. Uh, Jamie Brandon. No. It's a lot tougher this one, isn't it? When it's more recent, but again, it's in that inst- that horrible. Back in the good old days, forgettable man. <laughs> we probably played this guy up front with Stephen A. Smith, Craig Halkett. Um, no. He's well. So we played John um, Suter, Mitchell, Mikey Smith, Mikey Smith, Mikey Smith. Or someone else. Mm-hmm. I- and it's. Did we play no, Mallory Martin? Did, uh, oh, he was he was gone. Step in. He was step in. I think he gone by that. quite a lot of people liked him, and he wasn't really around for a great a, lot, a great amount of time. Jimmy Dunn. Dunn. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Make it a free for all now, exactly. um, because Corbettson. Was it just the free pull in a bench? Uh, you get two two no, the start two eleven, start. Um, and then you've got six from the bench. Uh, Jimmy Walker still there? was not playing. Lewis Moore. Was he nope. there? When he Craig Levine's love child. <laughs> bring him on for the sake of bringing him on. He was <laughs> right, right. So but we've got two more outfield players to yes. go. Yes. So, a subkeeper, we've only named one keeper. Yeah, I always Jake say Mulraney. outfield and I mean starting 11. Who did you say, mate? <clears throat> Jake Mulraney. Jake, Jake, Jake Mulraney. Mulraney. No, he wasn't there. It's too last minute. Too busy listening to a podcast or something. Like. Yeah, I can. <laughs> um, that Anthony, Anthony McDonald's on the right. bench and not used, Kev, yes. Mm-hmm. So we must have midfielders in there then if... if uh, yeah, we would have played one up front, 100%. Oh, who, who scored at Hamilton? So Haring was there. Oh. Have we done any wingers? It's Craig Levine in that case. <laughs> <laughs> <Is he 20 laughs> <wingers? laughs> um, um, Dario Zanata not... um, uh, uh, Bazanic Bazanic, yep The other one The other Australian dude What was it called? Ben Garuccio oh, there uh, You're mm, slimming down now We've only got five left to get um, One of them oh, I thought we were like done no, home. This, <laughs> this one's a This one's a Drill start another one did we have the boy uh, uh, Bobby Burns? No, no, we didn't. Kev, okay, stop trying to wind up. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, <laughs> if, if it yes. helps, Tam, uh, this one's exclusively for you. Um, co- uh, Shanks can't say his name properly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> uh, Wigan. No, it's Wigton. But... Oh, oh, sorry. Wigton, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, you've got four left to get. Two starting 11, two bench. One of them is... Connor Washington. Eh? Uh, it's been said already, but no. Um, oh, I don't think anybody said Connor Washington. Sure yet, did. Oh, well. no. um, Sean Clare? Sean Clare must be a show. Sean Clare. No. 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 Well, I'll just start telling you no. because we could be here all night. No. Yeah. No, don't. don't. Henderson? No, no Henderson. <laughs> right, date it properly because no. you're, you're throwing me off with your silly guesses. <laughs> yes. That's right, you so if Bobby played in goals, do we say better? Did we mention? Uh, yeah, I bet I was in the uh, squad. He was injured. He was in the bench. And that was why Don right, was So Jimmy Dunn, Dunn John Suter, Mikey Smith. Mitchell. Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell left back. But we might have played Mitchell in the midfield. 
probably did that because the first season he played left back, but second Gruccio uh, yeah. played Gruccio or Mitchell. Gruccio, uh, yeah. Gruccio was on the bench and never used. Right. So, so we. That team, I hate every single one in that team. <laughs> Glenn Wheeler? Uh, no, it's a good guess, but not. Um, I'll throw, I'll throw in a clue. Right? Um, one of the players, his dad was also a footballer. English. Played a few miles along from where I stay. Oh, oh Ollie Lee. Lee. Ollie. Ollie Lee. Yep. I forget about Ollie Lee because I like Ollie Lee. Mm. Yeah, he's got a good goal at Mr. Road. He sure did. Dickamona. Yes, well done, well done. Straight out of nowhere. Well done, Dickamona. Two left to get. <clears throat> One of them's. Were the young boys or were they jobbers? Uh, or a combination of both? Uh, I think a, a combination of both. Um, one of them's got the most Irish surname ever. Shares a surname with a character that was in Father Ted. Oh, Colin, Colin Doyle. Colin Doyle, oh. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tam's asking, <laughs> what's that... Father Ted? Yeah, that does no, get the... Ted, at least answers the question about who the other goalie was. There you go. Yeah. And the final one, um, he has not spelled his name right. Oh, uh, the man? boy that plays with Falkirk, Morrison. Correct. That's it. Right. Well, well done. At the end, obviously. No, that, Out of that lot, that has been... who, would you, who would you like to see back? <laughs> Not one of them. Um, Jimmy Dunn. Depends on what you mean by back. Do you mean like back as in we watch them get hung drawn and quartered in the plaza? <laughs> or do you mean back as in playing? Because I can give you an answer to both if you want. Uh, yeah, give us an answer to both. There's probably only one for that list, and it'd be Mikey Smith or take him for a pint. Yep, I would have Mikey Smith back. Multiple points, yeah. That would be uh, true. Right, well, now that's been drawn to a painful conclusion. Uh, the scores are <laughs> uh, Tem, uh, Tem and Ke- I was going to say Tem, Tem and Cav. <laughs> then Kev and Tam uh, are joint nine, um, and Corbett wins it with 13. So a uh, good bit of daylight between these. But that, that's it. Over and done with for another week. Can I ask one of the listeners to do a recount on that, please? Thanks. Well, I think you're the ones that I gave you. That lined you up and I gave you. I would just sit this one out. Like. You'd just be glad you got nine, Tam. I'm, I'm exactly. happy. Right. I'm okay. more than happy. Right, shut it off there. Right. <laughs> cool. Right, headlines. So, I think hearing stuff, obviously, Boyce and Mackay getting close to a return. I had me thinking earlier about, you know, where did they, where did they fit in? Anybody get any opinions on it? You looking forward to them coming back? No arsed. What's your what's your feelings? I think it's good that they're coming back, but it's also like the team's playing well just now and everybody knows what they're what they're doing. Um it's always good to have more firepower back, but again, Boyce's firepower is almost non existent just because of the, the kind of role he plays. But and Barry Mackay, I don't know, it depends what kind of attitude he brings with him this time. But it's a good problem to have, I suppose, but then you bring them back, do you upset the balance? Do you upset the way the team's going? I don't know. Right. It's a tough one, Kev, because I think we've seen through like, loads of players, including Shankland, I think that the more they've played under Naismith, the more Naismith is getting his opinion across and the way he wants to play and the sort of style and the way that the players are buying into it. I feel like I'm kind of excited that Barry Mackay, if he had the application and determination of like an Alan Forrest, then we'd have an absolute superstar in hand because he's undoubtedly, he's, he can be up there in the conversation, one of the best players in the league. It's just consistency and application in it. 100%. Um, and I remember going back to um, when we signed him from, from Swansea. Um, there was a, a number of, I'm sure it was Brad's that brought it up, so it was, that's how far, how long ago it was. And they said that they weren't, they weren't really bothered that he was going and leaving the club because he'd had a good spell and then he went right off the boil, didn't really try his, you know, his, and apply himself the right way, etc., etc. And I think there's probably an element of us seeing exactly the same player 
um, up until, of course, before his, his injury period. But um, I do wonder, you know, has he now bought in because he's seen what the rest of the team are doing, um, how the rest of the team are performing? Does that get a buy-in from him as well? And he thinks, well, look, if I want to be at this level, then this is the kind of level that I need to perform at week in, week out. I would hope it would be that. Aye, and you look at you look at the other players now that every I can't I touch wood as well. I'm struggling to think of the last time Hearts made the substitution that had a negative impact in the game. You know, we're bringing player, and that that shows that when players are getting their their opportunities, they're coming on, they're they're taking them. You know, you, we're rotating Fraser and Grant right now. Uh, they're basically essentially playing a half each as it as it goes. Uh, between Vargas, Oda, uh, they're switching in and out, week in, week out, coming back in, etc., etc. And it's that thing where, again, I was at the Federation Rally thing on Sunday, Naismith spoke about the fact that, you know, everybody knows, and loads of the players that did the interviews on the day as well spoke about the fact that they know that if they don't perform, there's someone waiting there to come back in. And I think Coven Barry McKay there, is a massive thing for us, Tam. And loads of the players actually, like Aidan Denham spoke on uh, on Sunday at the Federation rally saying that you know, Barry McKay is like, probably his biggest influence in the changing room. You know, he's giving him loads of pointers on how to play the game and uh, loads of folk kind of a massive respect for McKay. So if we can get him back and playing it, it's massive for Hearts, I think. <coughs> Absolutely. He's probably... It's, he's one of the more senior players in our team, isn't he? Um, in terms of what we've got, um, I did find it interesting. I don't know if you've seen last week uh, interview with Cami Devlin in the Evening News, and he was saying how he's trying to change his game because this is what Naismith wants. And I hope other players that have not been in the squad recently are seeing what the way we are trying to play, and are really trying to adapt their game. And I think Barry McKay certainly has a a place in the team, but at the moment he's down in the pecking order I don't think he goes straight back in so um, yeah it's interesting yeah and it was good to see Devlin back uh, on Saturday as well I thought he played again he, was, he came on and, and played well <coughs> and it's, it's that competition for places Ando which is probably for me anyway it's been the most impressive thing over the last weeks and months is the fact that we do now have starters for every position Aye, um, and they're all getting a fair, I suppose, crack of the whip. And the bit that I suppose makes sense is that it's not just a sub for sub's sake. Then you're bringing them on, they're uh, getting minutes, and they're actually contributing. And it, it works as part of a, 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 a sort of coherent system, which is good to see. Whereas beforehand, especially under Nielsen, it was right. If we get to sixty minutes, we make the changes, um, and just sometimes hope for the best. And you you change shape or whatever square pegs round holes we've covered that in years gone by, and it just felt a bit of a shit show. But Naismith seems organised and knows exactly what he's doing, and it's it's paying dividends. Yeah, and I'll do a bit. Of, we'll talk about the tactically stuff about what was impressive about Motherwell on Saturday as well. But you're right, it's the he's not scared to change when he spots things happening. He makes tactical switches all the time. In game, you make tactical subs. He's not he's not scared to, to change it up, which is which is a really positive thing for for everybody at the club. And again, when you look at again, we've spoke about there. You go back to last year, we'd have been absolutely begging for guys like Mackay and Boyce and Halkett and stuff and Benny to come back into the into the side. Now we're actually able to, you know, Halkett's basically he's not been seen. I know he played and maybe potentially picked up a wee bit of an injury against Airdrie, but I think it was more like the idea is now that Rouse is back as well. They can just drip feed him back until he's he's fully fit and hopefully get him consistently fit so that he can he can stay in the side type of thing. So yeah, it's pretty positive pretty positive stuff in that that sense as well. Devlin coming back. Uh, Benny said he's totally fine at uh, the Federation rally thing. He just said he'd felt his he uh, felt his hamstrings or whatever tighten up a wee bit so uh, no point in taking a risk when there's players there on the bench that can come on so that was decent speaking of the Federation rally was was really good manager Naismith spoke for a bit all the players kind of spoke to it was funny that when Naismith was asked what his goals for the season was he said I just hope not to be sacked by Christmas which made me laugh <laughs> uh, but loads of the players spoke really well about you know, team spirit and 
what the manager's asking them to do, keeping things simple and, you know, all the boys knowing that if they don't perform, the next person comes in class. I will say, though, the highlight of the whole Federation rally was that they spoke to Oda, who said, obviously, you're just learning English and you only know a few phrases, and they said, basically, yeah, I'm speaking, I'm learning English. And Scott Wilson says, oh, tell us the one phrase that you didn't know. And he said, Mon the Gorgie. That was like, <laughs> that was uh, the only thing he said. But what made me laugh is the fact that the 400 people in the room that heard them say he can't speak English, when the players, the <laughs> meet and greet was happening, it didn't stop people literally up, arm round Oda like that, like wisp. <laughs> you can tell him in his ear. Him and Tagawa, like, they literally have enough. Fucking clue what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I, I've been playing football since I was twelve, mate. See, see, see <laughs> me, just stay at wide drop. <laughs> Shut up, man. Uh, Did it was funny, like interpreter there. No, no, okay. <coughs> no. Just checking. Thank it. It was good as well. I think uh, Naismith had basically brought the whole first team was there, so they they cancelled training to to come here. Uh, everybody that was. That was there showed up, uh, McAvoy Forest, and that was there as well. So it was good seeing their wee things that they get credit in the bank. We bemoaned them for ages. I didn't get the opportunity to channel them on uh, Sunday for his standing on the touchline clapping the fans. But I'll get my I'll get my moment in the sun. Well, to say, mate, get out and clap the fans because it's winding me up. But they're the wee things that McAvoy have the stopwatch on. Yeah, <laughs> they're the things that help. Like that when. Say we're coming up for a big like all jokes aside, like the next three games are massive, right? The the big big games for Hearts and but he's got enough credit in the bank now that you know, you're not saying realistically setting targets and he has to win X amount of them, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You can see what we're trying to do and even if we did lose a couple of them, I think the the team bounces back. You know, there's enough structure in place there and belief in what they're doing for it to be sorted. So we things like that on Sunday showing up, showing face with the fans, it, it keeps and puts wee extra credits into the, the bank for them as they go. Next one uh, was obviously the day, I think, of the Morton tickets for the, or we'll get Monday night football for the for the quarterfinal of the Scottish Cup. Uh, it's got a general sale, which is a bit weird. I think just yeah, to... Anybody want to have a guess why? Aye. I guess it's I'm... purely down to the day and location, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It's a difficult I place. don't understand why it's not been there's a five o'clock slot three on a Saturday or a Friday night slot. Would logic would say take one of them, but yeah. Definitely. Seems a strange one. So be- Booming Celtic and Rangers got the via play slots, is that what happened? Yeah, it's the deal. Correct. Aye, Sunday Sunday, both both of them on Sunday, two o'clock and then five o'clock. Yeah. And then Aberdeen at the twelve, 12 o'clock on the Saturday. Yeah. So twelve o'clock, so you, if you're a Kelly fan you've got to get to Aberdeen by twelve o'clock. Exactly, and if you're a Hearts fan, you've got to get to Greenock, but there's no trains it's, coming back. It's to get him for Greenock, which is the problem. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, via yeah. play, always get the first pick um, right. of of every round. So, well, at the round Shit. they start covering it, which is just the... they'll be the ones that pay the money, probably. No, exactly. And the BBC's potless, so yeah. and they've never put they've never picked the game that is in the Celtic Rangers, so yeah. it's totally point, pointless. Uh, but I, <laughs> I think we get. Anywhere, no less than three thousand, probably three thousand, three and a half thousand or something. My hearts will sell that out pretty easily, I'd imagine. Uh, it'll be a total different game to Airdrie. It's an open pitch, so it's swirly, the wind and all that stuff, and it looks like an absolute tatty field. So, um, and they've got Doogie Emery. So, I was going to say that Doogie Emery will have eleven behind the ball, not like Airdrie when they try to play a bit of football. Yeah, that's it'll true. be. Aye, a tough one. I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't stand absolute toilet. Yeah, exactly the same. Very, very much the same. Anything else been happening in the world of the hearts that's caught your eye? The Vargas news. Looks like he's, yeah. uh, the deals looks like it's going to go through as a permanent. Um, yep. He's all man saying how he enjoys life in, in Edinburgh and playing for hearts, which is, which is great to read. I guess it, it also works for other youngsters that you can maybe pick up in the same the same manner. Who knows? Yeah, he's definitely coming into a game as well. What five and nine now for for Vargas or whatever? Uh, Six for I the told season. you just for just yeah. from being in cost just from being cost <laughs> and he was instantly my favourite my favourite Hearts player, uh, and that's all that matters. So 
<laughs> he's continued on in the same vein, which is decent. He's, he's uh, touch on Saturday was was incredible. We'll talk his about volley, that Kev. His volley was an absolute joke. I'm actually enjoying him hitting the post more than I'm, I'm scoring goals because his remember his, his shot against Aberdeen earlier in the season that smashed the inside smashed of the bottom, top corner post. It was unbelievable. So, yeah, I do enjoy Vargas. Right, anything else? Hearts headlines? You know what I talk about? Yeah, that's it. Nope. That's what shows how positive it is. Eh? <coughs> just, just not to talk about. No, we've not even moaned about the hotel when he went. Is that right? <laughs> Apparently, it's very it's nice. Apparently, it's very nice. Um, I was speaking to a boy in the gym the other day there that I know. Um, well, you did in the just, gym. To, just to clarify, I, w- I was also in the steam room at that point. I was going to say, were you, were, you, were you there picking somebody up? Or like... <laughs> <laughs> um, but he says uh, that the fact there's no windows, couldn't even care. And he's not even a Hearts fan, so he took his message who was a Hearts fan. So, yeah, uh, makes no difference. Right. Who cares? Lose on Saturday and I'll tell you my thoughts on it. <laughs> I'm like it. I'm like it, man. <laughs> uh, right. Well, let's talk about it. Saturday, Hearts 2, Motherwell nil. Uh, game at Ten Castle, our 11th win out of 12. Uh, fairly routine, wasn't it? Any surprises pre match? Anybody caught off guard, Bennett? And- no really. I wouldn't say so. Everything is interesting so. to see we went back to the back five now. Do you know three? Mm. So Or is that so, preempting the next three games? Well John Corbett's Monday night football tactic board thing or whatever. Go for it. Absolutely. <clears throat> but it's Tuesday, but aye. So Motherwell <laughs> found themselves three 0 up after thirty minutes or whatever, or even probably less than that, up at Aberdeen. Uh Aberdeen played a back four. Theo Bear, the big guy up front for Motherwell or whatever, caused the Aberdeen back line or the, the two centre halves a torrid time. So made sense that Hearts uh, set up the way they did, especially in the first half. If you look at how Hearts played, so Theo Bear, their whole their whole way of playing football is to get the ball up to him, you know, hit him long and hope that he can win win the headers, knockdowns, get that we divine guy and the other the other wee guy running about him on second balls try to get them wide playing channels etc and that caused Aberdeen nothing but problems uh, on the Wednesday night or whatever so again if you think if it's they play a back two Bear only has to go and press he's only got two people to press so if it's if we'd played Kent and Rouse he could have went and pressed Kent and then got over and pressed Riles, etc. Et you got three, he has to go between Kingsley, Kent or Riles. And if you watch in the first half, Hearts just made him run a bit because the whole thing is, mother what he pressed, that was their idea was either if they couldn't go long and they couldn't counter, they wanted to press and counter press so that they can get Hearts in areas of the park where they can get their players up. So if we play with a back two, <clears throat> Theo Bear can press by himself if we play a back three, he's going to be running a bit like a headless chicken between the three of them, or Mother will have to go and put two other players up with him. They have to either do a three man press or a one man press. So that's they never done that. So they, they they left Bear pressing by himself for the full first half, first 10, 15 minutes of the second half. He was blown at his arse. Yes. He was absolutely blown he was blown at his arse. So he couldn't get near he couldn't get near hearts. He was just chasing chasing shadows. Hearts changed second half and went back to the back four <clears throat> to suit us. You know, they'd, they'd settled into the game, they'd kind of sucked the life out of Motherwell, seen uh, almost that thing. You keep them at arm's length, you get the measure of them, see where they want to play football, how they think they can impact us, and then we go we go put uh, put our players on that can go dictate where we want them to be. So I thought tactically that switch on Saturday was, was brilliant. Uh, but I thought Hearts... It's it's weird to say we were so comfortable on Saturday, and um, when I mean comfortable, I don't mean in the game because there was points where all right, Motherwell had with that one brain fart in the whole first half, and they, that Lennon Miller or whatever fired it wide type thing. But uh, other than that, they never had it was like seventy three percent possession or yeah. something on Saturday for Hearts. 
They had one other shot that was a, a speculative toe poke for 40 yards that took a, def- a deflection and went up and Xander Clark had to put it over the bar. But Hearts were fully swagger on Saturday. Like, I, I don't know about you, Kev, you were at the game as well, but no point did I think Hearts were going to lose. At no point did I think Hearts, even if we conceded, wouldn't have gone and win. I didn't, at no point did I think we've ran out of ideas here. We didn't know what we're up to. It was just total and utter control, but control with absolute swagger. We made Motherwell go to the areas of the park that we wanted Motherwell to be in. We They, they chased us and we ran them ragged. Yep, can't, uh, I can't disagree with that. Um, I think the, the only... The only thing that you would be saying is you're upset by is the fact that that first half there was no actual goal to, to say how much we actually penetrated them. Um, yep. We were we were <laughs> pulling them left, right, and centre. Um, I thought I thought Atkinson had a great game on on Saturday when you know for the way in which he approached the game by coming on um, showed a totally different element to what we get with Limbiaska because he wanted to come inside. Uh, I think we wants to hit the I him too. Um, he <laughs> wants to. He wants to hit the, the the byline and put the cross in. So it just it just showed you that we've got that we've got that ability to make a men you know to make a change, um, and it, it showed. Um, <laughs> as I say, we'll come on and talk about other bits and pieces of the game. But I was really impressed with the way in which we played on Saturday, uh, and like you, never really felt that we're, at any point we were under any real pressure. Uh, I like what Naismith said after the game as well. You know, but everything, and I know it's it's easy, it's lip service for these things most of the time. But when the manager talks pre-game and you see it in the match, and then talk, talks post-match and you can see it in the game, it makes sense. Like, do you know what I mean? And I think if there was any criticism about Hearts on on Saturday night, Naismith nailed it. He said we we're guilty over playing it in the final third. Sometimes we picked a pass too many, you know, we, we went, maybe played a pass into an area where we just created some space, like loads of times we kind of managed to work the ball neatly into the, the middle of the park and then we kind of moved it back out into the area, the, the wide area where we just came from. So, I think, so that, that was probably if there was anything to say that was negative about the first half on Saturday, it would potentially be that, but I seen some folk on kickback say it was a slow start or whatever, and that's total and utter nonsense like genuinely uh, we need to be we put a thing on kickback to say you know what one do you prefer do you prefer the George Burley and we've spoken about this at length come out fly in and then blowing out your arse after 65 minutes and odd known or do you want to grow into the game and end the game absolutely flying again on Saturday if we'd played 10 more minutes we'd have won 4 or 5 now you know the amount of chances that we were creating the bodies and numbers that we get in the box for chances are crazy. If you look at the actual second goal, which is in the 92nd minute, there's Oda and Vargas trying to get the ball. Atkinson, Shankland are, are on the, the right-hand side. There's Cochrane, uh, Cochrane and Kingsley <coughs> coming in as well. Like it's, it's a joke. The numbers in which we, we get into the box are, are incredible. So I thought, tactically, we just played... We did what Celtic and Rangers did. I mean, like we literally showed up, never panicked. At no point did we look like we were panicking or ran out of faith in the idea as to what was happening. We just kept doing it, kept doing what we're doing, kept doing what we're doing, and just knew that Motherwell will eventually. They won't be able to keep up the concentration. They've got no out ball. Every every time they went long, not only did we have three at the back to win headers against that field bear, we also had the plan of well. He's going to win some headers. It's just inevitable. So we had Hoff and Benny there, and every single time they did win headers, we had two men fighting for the second balls and and got the ball back and uh, played well. Hoff, Kev, is turning into probably one of our best players, isn't he? Yeah. Again, it's <laughs> something we've mentioned a number of times. Is he's had a run of games under his belt. He's now showing a level of consistency that regular football will actually bring. Um, so from that point of view, it's great to see. The question then comes, or not the question, but then the element comes that when you want to change it, you're going to have a Devlin on, you know, um, on the bench, a Grant on the bench, whoever it is that you want to then bring into that into that role and into that position. So yeah, I was I was quite impressed. Um, 
is there's been a, a massive change in the way in which he's started to uh, conduct elements of the game as well. I think that only is coming from the level of con- confidence that he actually has. Tam, before you say what you're going to say, does anybody want to take a guess at what Hoff's pass completion rate was on Saturday? 100%. I've seen it, so I'll know. 98% he made one <sighs> pass that never found its right. man. A shame, right? That's incredible. That is incredible. <clears throat> That's incredible. Tam, what were you going to say? To be honest, the, what you've just said literally ties in with what I was going to say. He just he's, he's a player now that just does the basics right, and anything beyond that is an extra. He's just he seems to be there. He seems to do whatever you ask him in the right way, and he's really grown in it. And I I love him. He's one of my favourite players at the moment. To be honest, yeah, I think there was there was times on. On Saturday in the first half, where him and Benny had opportunities to probably shoot, in terms of the space opening up, and especially off his two goals for Hearts have come from from shooting yeah. from distance, if you know what I mean. But yeah, <coughs> Saturday were a big test for him. That environment coming up against the crowd, coming up against a good team in that area, I'll be interested to see how how he does. But yeah, he's been he's been massively impressive uh, since he settled. Uh, again, he spoke at the he spoke at the the rally thing and, and and spoke about you know settling in and getting to his friend. He's like he's good pals with Vargas. Obviously, he's got the Australian and other boys that have helped him settle in and that as well. But like you can just see that when you're comfortable and you're surrounded, you're comfortable going to your work. It's like any you don't have to be a football player or you know you can be a baker, a postman, whatever. If you're comfortable in your work environment and you like got your work, you do a better job. Do you know what I mean? And so it's been. It's been class to see. Ando, what you was forget it? He's, oh, sorry, just to add, you you forget he's so young as well. He's what is he like twenty two or something like that? Yeah, um, which you actually forget that because he looks I don't know about thirty, but <laughs> I just I feel like when we were judging him earlier, it, if if that had been somebody coming through like a, a denim or something like that, you would have probably given him our time. Um, but because he's travelled for Australia, probably didn't he? Um, and he is just a young boy travelling for Australia. It's it's a lot probably to, to take on. Um, really. I think he so. I think he probably benefits from the fact that he sees some of the younger like Denham and Tate there as well. Uh, yeah. Him knowing that <clears throat> all the burden doesn't fall on him. The manager backs the the players. He trusts the players as long as they do what they're asked to do. It doesn't matter what age you're. If you do what you're you're asked to do you'll play, because I thought Macaulay Tate when he came on was absolutely super, but again, uh, right. as well. But Andy, what was your thoughts on, on the game on Saturday watching on your totally legal stream? Uh, well, it's uh, th- th- this is the bit that I don't like, is, and I think you or other people have covered it before, is that you, when you're watching it on the screen, you then get a full appreciation. It's like watching it on TV, it's just never as good as seeing it, but then um, <clears> like <throat> you, you then get to see everything that happens off the ball. Um, and it's a more detailed uh, sort of shape on how we're actually set up. But I can only really echo what's been said already without labouring it too much, which is at, at no point did I ever think we were in any danger of, of throwing it away. I was happy with um with the team selection. Then everything that they'd done was confident, it was assured, it was clean, it was to the point, there was nay, and I'm often guilty of going after people and saying, oh, that's a fucking waste of time or whatever, like, what what are you doing that for? But everybody just seems to do the basics very, very well just now, and it's all coming together mm-hmm. as a complete picture, Then and when it clicks, it clicks, and it's, it's brilliant to watch. Because I obviously sit right behind the goals, so you get to see, you'll obviously see it for the, the, the Wheatfield stand camera or whatever, so it's static. You don't you see the play as the play progresses. You don't see the, the other bits, you know. So for long periods of time on Saturday, I watched Theo Bear screaming for support, you know, as he was gone from one side of the pitch to the other. And, you know, if he burst a gut to get to a Kent or a Rouse or something to go press them, and they just passed it into, like, Hoff, and there was no Motherwell players there, you know, he was going tonto to be like what are you doing like I've just burst a gut to go closed in the space you should you should be here to engage etc etc and it's one of the things that we've spoke about before and again it's why I'm excited to see Mackay come back into the team because the more the more players that occupy not just space in the ball but they occupy the minds of the team that you're playing against 
the more likely they are to make mistakes. You know what I mean? Lauren Shanklin scored a free header on Saturday. It's an unbelievable header. But if you were, we were sitting here, right, and we were the four managers in Motherwell gone right hard, got a free kick, what should we do? Well, mark the best striker in the league. Let's make sure he doesn't get a free header. But they're not just having to look after Shankland. Now Vargas is scoring goals. Forrest is causing problems and scoring goals. Oda was superb on Saturday oh, when he came on. Hoff can score. And it's that stuff. It's the... So Theo Bear runs his guts out to go press and shut down the space. But the rest of his team are too scared to come forward because they're like, if they break that, like what happened with Rangers at Tynecastle, where else, he breaks the shape, he breaks the structure of the team to go and engage and he doesn't win that ball. Rangers score for that straight away. That's what good teams do. And that's that bit where it's like, Folk are saying they're playing a low block, etc. There's a difference between how Motherwell set up to play versus Livingston, who did put 10 behind the ball. Motherwell just couldn't get it because they were terrified. They were too scared to go press. They were too scared to go aggressive because Hearts, especially in the second half, every single time they tried to engage Motherwell, or Motherwell tried to engage us, sorry, we had, we, had two, we were overlapping at Forrest and Vargas, or uh, Oda and Vargas, sorry, on the right, and... Cochrane and Forrest or Kingsley and Forrest on the left. Every single time Motherwell came and pressed, we had three players around them and popped it and put it into the space. Uh, so it was very impressive. And that's <clears throat> that's one of the most in, impressive things recently. And we've spoken about this before with Robbie Nielsen, was that if plan A didn't work. Plan B was always just keep them plan A and see what happens. Like Stephen A. Smith isn't scared to, to change stuff up, I didn't think. Uh, Dexter had a bad first half uh, on Saturday, but he obviously settled what he wanted today. He'd seen where, where we could cause Motherwell problems and brought Axon on to be like, well, actually, we can get Atkinson, Oda and Vargas all doing that one side, and we can get Kingsley, Cochrane and Forrest doing the other. We're going to we're going to score goals. Like we're we're going to we're going to score goals, and that kind of arrogance and swagger is is what I'm like the most about Hearts right now, Tim. Absolutely, I think one thing that goes along with that arrogance is just we're thoroughly professional. We're like a modern outfit. We'll we'll change when it needs to be. As you said earlier, we set up to know how they're they're going to play the game. And we'll adapt to that game as the game goes on. Like people are calling us a second half team, but at the same time we we just have the confidence in our own ability. Um, and that's where that arrogance and swagger comes. And we know well, eleven games in a row without loss, like we know that we're we're gonna do it. So I I love it. It's class. It's like first and, half of the season, the second half of the season. You didn't win anything in the in first halves. You win games in the second half, either by scoring the goals or seeing out the game, etc., etc. So, again, it's that thing where, <clears throat> aye, we all love the, the swashbuckling, George Burley, 2 3 nil up after 25 minutes, but if you get a goal at 2 0 at 60 minutes and they take it back to 2 1, the momentum sucks right out, out of you. Do you know what I mean? And, and then you think, Jesus, we're we're deed on our feet here. Or you get to a point where you it's nil nil and the team you've played against have dug in and you've battered them but you kinda get a goal and now you know actually after sixty, seventy minutes we're gassed. Yeah, never to go. You think, how'd you win that game? Whereas now we are literally I know I keep saying it, but genuinely, I'd love to see our chance or our XG rating or whatever for seventy minutes onwards because I would genuinely think we create so many chances score loads of goals at those points in the game when teams are teams are done teams are done do and you, hearts are fully confident do you reckon we are like fitter than we've ever seen in years as well yeah I, fitness uh, maybe definitely in terms of well touch wood injuries don't seem to be blighting us as, as much as before <clears throat> but again it's that thing where I don't know what they do in training. I don't know if it's a slow build. Because some people do like, you know, Monday light session, Tuesday a bit harder, but on till you get to Friday, Saturday when you're full pelt. Some people just do 50% sessions until Saturday and then expect you to go 100%. Some coaches do 100% every single day, no matter what. I don't know. Uh, but the aggression in which we play 
especially how we end games as well, is is pretty impressive. And it helps when you bring in, we've said before, pace in this league especially is such such a strength to have. That's what, if you look at everything, if you're, well, we'll turn it into the Celtic podcast, but if you were to look at everything that's wrong with Celtic right now versus everything that was right about Celtic last year was that how aggressive how fast they were in passing and pressing and tackling and getting the ball forward. Now they're a lot slower and methodical and it becomes when you keep players guessing as to what they're going to do next, it, it's mentally overloads them and, it, and it, it knackers them. And when you're slow and methodical and the plan doesn't work like Kilmarnock did on Saturday with Celtic, it becomes easy to defend and play against because you know what they're going to do. You know, whereas... You know, for like a bag of cats or whatever, you have no idea what's going to happen, what direction they're going to go in. It makes it difficult. You don't know what to stick or twist. So, uh, but I, I think Hearts are massively impressive right now. Anybody I thought Kev at the game? So the first two were the first two substitutions. We made two substitutions at halftime, didn't we? We brought on, we brought on Atkinson and Grant. Vargas. Grant, no, we brought Vargas. Vargas, didn't we? Vargas and Atkinson. Took off Cochran. Um, we take Cochran off in the f- at half time as well. Let me keep saying Cochran. Aye. <clears throat> Change shape. Then the next two substitutions were what? Benny and Fraser? Is that right? Sorry, I got that wrong. Benny came off at half time with Let me keep And then Cochran and Fraser. Aye. For Tate and Oda. Yeah. Tate and Oda. I thought, okay, well, let's talk about it because we've, we, we've said before about Oda and how he's a bit hot or cold or whatever, but I thought Oda was absolutely superb on Saturday when he came on. Right, and he was flying doing that, you know, both wings, because um, he'd done that, you know, they had that bit in the second half where they swapped over um, from from left to right, right to left. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought he played really well on Saturday. Um, definitely looked like he had that confidence factor back in his, in his play. Um, and, you know, that can only bode well for for others, you know. That maybe have they been hitting the you know heights that they expect? Oda's done that. Naismith stood by him. All right, he's not given him a number of starts, but he's been giving him game time to continue that that sort of build. And I think you've seen that sort of the the, the fruits of that particular um, set of. Decision making from from not just Naismith because you've got to give Forrest and uh, and McAvoy the credit as well, just to keep giving him team time. He came on to a great game on Saturday. Does he keep then? You know, I think you go with exactly the same sort of setup and team for for Saturday coming, and give him the opportunity in the last 25, 30 minutes of a game. Yeah, I think so, Tam. Just to add, to add what Kev said, I completely agree. But one thing I just really liked about Oda on Saturday he was just so much more direct. Like yeah. every time he got the ball, he was taking on the man. A lot of the times this season, we've seen him when he's trying to keep the possession, he'll pass the ball back, he'll find the nearest man. But I thought he was just more direct, more of a purpose. Everything about it was, and they had that chance that was really good. Then that summed up exactly his play that day, and it was just so much more direct and ready to attack which he needs to do that more and if he keeps doing that we've got a real asset to be honest he's even aggressive in his tackle there was a couple of times in the, the second half he chased the guy down won the ball back off him on the touchline type thing harried him put him under pressure I like the he floated inside loads as well which was really good as well like that sometimes we've spoke about it before about that that match intelligence where Boyce and Shanklin used to make the same runs or move into the same space and kind of trip up over each other's feet. Oda was good at understanding that actually Atkinson and Vargas were there as well, so all three of them kind of get to the byline. You know, so if one if one goes for the overlap or offers on the overlap, the other one, the next option should be if you 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 run the channel inside and you've got two options there, and it was good to see Oda constantly. If one went wide, he came inside to try and keep again. You occupy space, but the the biggest and the most important thing is you occupy minds. You know, Motherwell didn't know whether to to come or go because there are options all over the place for Hearts. So I was really impressed with with Oda. Uh, we're turning into I don't want to talk about Mystic Core, but you've heard me talk about this a million times before. I said it. 
the start of last season. I'm going to keep saying it. I absolutely love Alan Forrest. Uh, Alan Forrest getting game time is yeah, he's one of the first names on the on the team sheet. He was unlucky not to score on Saturday, Ando, but is just all round player for Hearts right now is is sensational. Yeah, isn't it? he's um he's definitely arrow up on him. I think if we'd had this conversation at the start of the season based on the his his efforts and application last season, I would have been meh a bit a bit fifty fifty on the fence. I think he he showed last season in spells that he was really really good. Well, sorry, had potential, but this season um he is really really good, really good. The um, scored a few cracking goals. I know we can't talk about it because ultimately it didn't really matter because it was a two-year mm-hmm. draw, but he, he's got that in his game um, at, a, at a moment's notice. And the fact that we've signed him just a, a contract extension as well, it's like, pfft, like this boy, he, he could be earning us a fortune in a few years' time. Yeah. On the back of what Ando said as well, do you want to know somebody who called it last season? Me? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Corbett tweeted March last year saying um, if Alan Forrest had the game time that Barry Mackay had, he would have more goals, more assists, and a better performance. Who was yeah, right? But again, and people have started retweeting it this year. <clears throat> I, I don't know how they got, found that. Just it makes sense, it. right? Because, and that, that isn't it, people might see that as a swipe at, at Barry Mackay. It's nothing to do with Barry Mackay. It was more about the management team. You know, Barry McKay was allowed to do nothing for 89 minutes in the hope that in the 90th minute he would pull something out of the hat, etc, etc, which is totally and utterly fine. You get that with luxury luxury players. But Alan Forrest is the opposite, is that if Barry McKay's got all the natural talent in the world, Alan Forrest has to work on all of that stuff. So Alan Forrest will give you everything that he's got for 90 minutes and maybe 80% of that isn't good enough. But that other 10% is he won't stop trying, he won't gee up, he'll continue to tell, do what you've told him to do and he'll put a ball in for Shanklin to score. He'll beat a man and, and sco- there was numerous times on Saturday Alan Forrest beat two or three of the mother players and got to the byline, cut it back and the keeper had to cut it out or one as a corner or there was no one there and had to circle back hundreds of times. Honestly, it was ridiculous. He had his man on toast Call on Saturday. You you better watch what you're saying. Tam will start a campaign to get him on a flight to Germany come June. <laughs> but it was, and it makes sense because I said, <laughs> you seen him at Livingston, right? And he was trusted at Livingston. And that for me makes a big, big difference. You know, it, you, you, you're not playing with the pressure. And I felt last year, if you were a new player coming to a club the size of Hearts, you start the season, you get four goals out of your first six games, and then suddenly you're part of your rotation and you're you're dropped out, etc. And it turns into actually, well, we're going to ignore the four, five, six good things that you've done over here and you're being rotated because you've done one or two things wrong. That sucks the life of you because you start to think, well, wait a minute, because the guy you've replaced with me has got three career goals for Hearts and only a handful of assists, but yet there's this myth around about him that he's this huge, massive influence on the team. He's done nothing week in, week out. But yet, he starts and um, I get thrown on with 10 minutes to go or I get thrown on and asked to play left wing back or I get thrown on and I get asked to play right wing and all that sort of stuff. So, it makes sense that Alan Forrest has come on it again because he's trusted and he's, and he's told, this is what we want you to do. Go try and do it. And you know, even when he is rotated out or drops out, when he comes on, he makes an impact. So, I... Uh, um, I love Alan Forrest. I think he's 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 turning into a, a superb player for Hearts. Our man, King Lawrence of Shankland again. People will see the header and think, "Oh, Motherwell should have got a tighter term or whatever." But Kev, that header, I'm right behind it. That is a joke of a header, and I'll tell you why. Because he plays to the conditions a hundred percent. If he tries to header that without it going down and into the ground, there's no way he gets the power to beat the goalkeeper for essentially what, 16, 17 yards out with a header. He's, he's no beyond the penalty spot when he gets it. He's not, go, he's not getting a header in there. He headers it down onto the ground, a soaking wet surface. He knows he's going to skid. You watch the reaction to the goalkeeper. He doesn't dive. No. As soon as that ball hits the ground, that was behind it. As soon as it hit his head, as soon as it hit the ground, it was in. It was always in. 
Ah, he was very well taken, and, and and he had to generate the power in in the header as well. The the cross from from Forrest, which was bang on the money, didn't have the actual pace that you maybe look for a near post run. Know that he was near post, but you know that's a run that would allow him to get his head to 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 loop it up and over the keeper kind of idea. So he had to do a lot of work in his in his in his self. He's yeah, you're right. He's got the freedom of the box really, um, but that doesn't automatically mean is a goal. You yeah. know, I think I think people forget that that oh there was no defender round about him. Ah right, well, you can have no defenders round about you, but still make an arse of it. We've had plenty of strikers um, who have done that over the years. What he's actually done is he knew perfectly well what he was doing, and from that point of view, you do get to a point where you expect him to do it week in week out. Because right. I mean, how was that? That six headers he scored this season. I don't know. I, think I, read, I read somewhere. It's a joke. Ah, it's crazy. He's a joke. For a boy, for a boy that's no six foot, you know, you're six foot three, six foot four to score that many headers in a season, uh, it just shows you the the level of um, consistency in his in his play, all round consistency. And Pam, that that that's what's the most important thing about it. Sometimes, let's be honest, right? You score with your head. Sometimes it's just a case they put your head there and you hope for the best, right? That's what you it's what you do. You don't know how the ball's going to hit off your dome. It could hit you square in the forehead. It could hit the top of your head. It could glance off. You don't know. He knew everything that he was doing on Saturday. He knew exa- that was exactly if he was to envision when he's standing there waiting for the ball to come over. He's thinking, put it on my head. I'm going to head it down and I'm putting it in that corner. And that's exactly what he did. I. You're right. Like how many times you see teams not hearts because we never really score for corners, but they'll, they'll stick the big men up and they'll challenge for it and it'll be a goal. But every time you see one of Shanklin's headers that goes in, it's 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 something that's more technical than just putting your head on it. He's 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 putting it into the corner every single time, and I credit them. There's not much more to say about him at this point. It's just exactly. hard. Hard if you look at uh, it, the, the uh, figures are. Wait there, sorry. Keep your good point because I need a tam. So wait a wee second. <laughs> right, Ando, you were about to make a superb point about Lawrence. Oh, aye, it was just the number of goals he scores with his head. So it's uh, by my calculations, as you just seen <laughs> off there, off air there, it's basically one and four. Then and tell me another player that was ever that prolific with his head. Name. he's just we've spoke about it at length it's again we're in the territory where you just take it for granted but the thing on Saturday Kev in the ground you just knew that that was that was it like there was only going to be one winner my heart scored it was one way traffic it was wave after wave of hearts attack yep. uh, it's impressive isn't it? It, it it certainly was impressive on, on the set or in the second half on Saturday Um Probably the one thing that you again, like I said earlier on, the one thing that you didn't have was was the goals, was the actual product at the end of the end of the game, and it wasn't until I was reading the, um, the sort of write up in the uh, in the papers of how late the Vargas goal actually was. I, I, I still had it in my head. It was, it was still about ten minutes, to, you know, twelve minutes to go or whatever in the game. Um, and it wasn't until I actually went and read it, it was actually scored an injury time. Yeah, it was an unbutter. But I, I know the on another day, I keep, I keep saying it. Somebody's going to get absolutely battered by Hearts because we just create so many chances. Vargas hit the post, for the keeper saves it. He should have slipped in Oda or Shanklin to where basically the tap in if they'd went the man over. Numerous times where you're you're in the if man he had boss category where you're 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 at the byline. And we just keep her punched it away, or defender managed to block it last minute type thing. I mean, chances where the play just opens up, and somebody could have had a dig, somebody could have had a shot. Somebody's going to get absolutely pumped by Hearts. Someday, it would be unreal if it was on Saturday. Well, but, oh, that that be a mic, or, mic drop. Or save it for Wednesday. I thought you were going to say Wednesday. Yeah, save I it for Wednesday. Wednesday. That, would be, yeah, that would be <laughs> class. But yeah, genuinely, and watching them defend. V Aberdeen was like, like what the <laughs> what the hell? They were as well just playing any manny up at Petodri on Saturday because it was shambolic how bad the defending was by both teams. But I 
all round, just real impressive. My one thing I did kind of say on Saturday is that I, I think George Grant has to play. I know Scott Fraser's here on loan, uh, and uh, that's not to say Scott Fraser had a bad game, by the way. I thought he played okay. But I think Grant makes the team tick. I think uh, there's no, no coincidence that he comes on and we start getting into the areas of the park where we want to be. Uh, and again, I think Fraser will get there. I think he's more than capable of getting there. But right now, I think George Grant knows these players. He's played in this team. He knows how Naismith wants to play, etc., etc. He's not embedding into the team. He's not finding his feet. I think that 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 Grant has to has to start. I think he makes the team tick, Tim. I agree. Um, I think he's that link. I know you. We spoke about Boyce coming back, and I think Boyce also has that aspect to him where he helps us tick, but at the same time, I think Grant is the one that we still continue with. Um, as you say, he's the one that's got an eye for a pass, he's got the eye for that sort of forward movement, and um, he might not always be involved in the game, which we've seen against one of the last games, can't Dundee. remember, but, um, <laughs> Dundee, <laughs> but then when he shows up, he does, and that's exactly what we're after, so yeah, I agree. Cool, yeah. Right. Well, obviously, anything else that caught your eye on Saturday? Is the game? Atmosphere on the ground, I thought was good on Saturday. Right, well, I'm actually, I might, say, I might say thank you to the guys in hospitality because they kicked started the atmosphere in the ultras because they, what was funny, one of the wee stewards came down to say, the guys in the hospitality are asking you to stop waving your flags. Can they, can they see the game? And we were like, fucking thank you. <laughs> Get the flags up. <laughs> Get the flags up. We had the. F- the, we've got telescopic poles that are six metres tall. <laughs> so I could, I could literally have the flags touch the roof at this at Town Castle. I was like, get the flags up! Uh, but it was good. And now I liked as well as the, the team... I think the crowd are starting to understand what the team are doing and they're behind it. You know, It was now now at half-time on Saturday and very little booze. I know that sounds absolutely mental, but for Hearts, <laughs> that's, that's progress. And again, that's that's testament and credit to Naismith and the, the coaching staff because they've built that trust with the crowd. You know, it, it, it doesn't feel accidental what we're doing right now. I was always uneasy when it came to Robbie Nielsen when it came to that stuff because even if he'd stumbled onto the winning formula, Robbie loved to watch match of the day and change his mind because that's not what Pep or Klopp were doing, etc., Naismith seems to be pretty comfortable in his skin, knowing what he's doing and doing what he's doing. So, I I thought the crowd was 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 good on was good on Saturday uh, as well, which was which was good to see. Uh, so big game Saturday, my way to Rangers at Ibrox. I think it's been God knows how many years since we won one at Ibrox. Is anybody? Buzzing with confidence. Has anybody got any hot takes on Saturday they want to share with us? <laughs> I'm just going to keep my face shut about the whole matter. I think it's a strange one. Like, I'm, half my team at work are Rangers fans, and they're all really nervous about Saturday, saying that this isn't the team they want to face at this point in time, all that. And I'm just like, but you're going to win, in a sense. And that's just probably me, ha- creature of habit thinking we're going to Ibrox and we're going to lose or whatever but this is the best opportunity we probably have to take some points and make it a title race obviously uh, hey, Kev I'm not I'm actually not asked about taking the points because it sounds mad to say but I trust the team like it's no I felt over the last wee while games like this are always points like do you know what I mean like you know that oh, you lose here we could lose heavily you know I'll be very, very shocked if Hearts lose heavily on Saturday. You know, if, if it's a if it's a cricket score, I'll be I'll be shocked. Not to say that it can't happen. Rangers are a good team. They've got million dollar, million dollar. Why did I say that? You know, million pound players, million pound contracts, etc. And you know, they're a, they've been the butt of the joke in their own town for two decades. You know, they're now sitting top of the league. They've they're the kind of the same as us. They're an absolute winning machine. Uh, so, yeah, it would be really tough on Saturday, Kev. Uh, you know, yes, you've been on a we're on a good run. Um, we're putting uh, good performances together. We're scoring goals. But you know, again, that you know, like 
a lot of people are already saying that shouldn't just change because you've gone outside an EH postcode or you've you've gone past the the bridge at Har Hill. Um, so from that point of view, you know, I genuinely believe that there still will be a level of confidence and a level of um, expectation amongst the actual players. But I think they've got to a point as well where they're not being blasé about it. They're being very professional. They're being very coy in regards to the way in which, you know, we only take each game as it comes. The next game, yeah, we could lose on Saturday. But as you rightly say, the foundation's already there. That, okay, we'll take Saturday out of the game or we, we, we do lose. Right, we start again. And we start again for next Wednesday night. And I think that's that goes back to what you've said before about the mentality of possibly even Naismith bringing his experience from days at Ibrox and Goodison Park and Norwich and everywhere else that he's been, you know, bringing that to the club and, and giving, you know, the players, that is the expectational levels that I, as a manager, want to bring to this club. And if you don't want to agree here, then there's the exit door. And I think a lot of the players are, are backing him for that now. And it's only visible when we actually start to see it on the park. And like, football's football, right? Anything can happen. You, you can the best laid plans and all that stuff. Anything can happen on Saturday. And the thing I want to see on Saturday is that we we go ask questions. You know, how many times have we watched Hearts go and just be powder puff? You know, just they're they're, they're hanging on. If they could get a nil nil or a one nil and shake hands and leave, they would have taken it. And we just want no matter what the score is, if Hearts get beat, Hearts get beat. It can happen. And it's happened to better teams. Our better teams, our historic teams, have all lost at Ibrox stuff. You just want them to go ask a question, Definitely. don't they? Um, this this game doesn't define the season. Um, we've got enough daylight between uh, the teams behind us that, that this isn't a pivotal. But you're you're absolutely right. We've went to Celtic Park and brushed them aside pretty much as if they were nothing. We had a, a good, what I thought was a, a not too bad game against Rangers earlier on in the season, but obviously just couldn't. Couldn't see it across the line. Then I think this one will be different, though. Then I think just everything that we've spoken about. It, 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 I don't want to say it's all just going to line up and it's all just going to click into place, but this is this team's been building towards something, and the as you rightly say, someone is going to get a severe doing off of us. Now I don't think we're going to go into Ibrox and give them a severe doing. Far from it. But I think we'll get out. Of, we'll get out of the city way. The way of victory for the first time in God knows how long, and that is a massive, massive achievement if we do that. Well, that's the confidence that I've not got. That's like, bold, <laughs> I think uh, Rangers had 33 <laughs> shots on target or something like that, or 33 shots on goal against Ross County in our last home game. They're probably sitting saying the same thing as what we are saying that <laughs> somebody's going to get an absolute battering by us. But I'm like, I, I like the confidence. You, you've got to go with swagger, you've got to go, and we've been. The last couple of times we've been to Glasgow, even there when we beat Celtic, we've went almost in protective mode, you know, hoping for the best, but absolutely praying that we didn't get didn't get battered, if you know what I mean. So I don't see us doing that on Saturday. I think we'll go with a bit more ambition, a bit more swagger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we have to take in take consideration the fact that Rangers Rangers are a good side uh, and they're they're flying just now in terms of of where they are. They also again on Sunday managed to somehow get two penalties in one game for the sixth time since VAR was introduced they've had two penalties in the same game, crazy the, both of them were penalties by the way that's, that's no conspiracy theory, both both of them were penalties the, uh, how the ref even needed VAR to give them is, <laughs> uh, is, is mental but uh, that's a different story bye, right, let's go then and those obviously Full of confidence. So we'll go to Ando first for his big match prediction. What are you saying the score is on one Saturday? To us. It'd be very nice. tight, but one. Tam. Yeah, two hundred Rangers. Kev, one each. I can't see it. the SFA VAR will not allow Hearts to win one now. <laughs> like we'll play forty-five minutes. They added on time, so it's either going to be like three 0 Hearts or. 2-0 Rangers or something like that. It's not, never going to be 1-0 Hearts. But it'll be two each. Yeah, there's a conspiracy. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be two each on, on, uh, on Saturday. Are we going right. to roll over and do predictions for the Hibs game? Cause, oh no, we'll be back on, maybe before then. Nah, yeah. we'll do. Oh, we'll, we'll get some. We'll, we'll do predictions for, for the Hibs when we, on Sunday. Sad. On Sunday. Cool. 
Right, anything else you just want to talk about? No, I think we're all good. We're good. Nice. Right, boys. Well, hopefully the roll continues and it's lucky 13 on Saturday. Aye. And we'll see you all next week. All right, Catch boys. See you later. See you later, lads. Gargoyles.